we have a black frame. We have, these are my ribbon tails cut at 13 inches right here. Okay. And the red and red and white stripe right here. Okay. And then we are going to be using this. I love border mesh, y'all. I love it. This is a black border mesh with red and white stripes. And I got this from Craft Outlet. Don't ask me how long ago, but that's where I got it. And then I love this. This, y'all, can be used year-round. It's a metallic red and white stripe, and this is from Craft Outlet. So what, let me lower you down so that you can see. And, oh, I forgot to show you. This is our sign. I love this sign. Rachel, with Rachel's Crafty Corner, designed this for me. And she did an awesome job. Y'all, I don't, I've never seen a bowling wreath. I think it is awesome. Okay. And uh, so there you go. And you can go to her site and she has it on her Etsy page. So, um, all right. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with the red and white and we're going to alternate it. So, for those that are on with me, let me tell you, I am glad to be back. It's been a while. It's just that I haven't been well. It was my problem. And what the problem was is that I, um, I have a very bad neck. I uh, had all my uh, discs replaced. I have degenerative disc disease. And um, they replaced... I've had all my discs replaced. And what's happening is that everything's just deteriorating. And um, so uh, what was happening is that when I ate, I would get these severe headaches. And I had gotten, for before all this came about, I was doing real well. I had gained weight because everybody knows that I don't eat much. But uh, I had gotten up to what the doctors wanted me to get up to. And that was, I was lucky to be there. Uh, I got up to about 126, okay? Well, y'all, I got on the scale this morning. And uh, I'm 115. So I, the doctors were not happy. But I, you know, when you can't eat, you can't eat. I mean, I couldn't eat and barely could drink. The pain was so bad. So what they did is a month ago, they went in, and I guess it's right mid-back, and they put a pain stimulator from that uh, in my back all the way up to my neck, and uh, I've got a little thing that I push, and... When the headaches come when I eat, I can raise it, and then I can lower it, and it helps. And I just have the headaches, not just when eating, but all the time. So when the headaches come, um, I can uh, now eat. So uh, I'm doing great. I'm excited. So... But I still don't eat much. I never really have an appetite, y'all. Now, I'm not answering. Y'all, I can't see. I For some reason, it's not coming up on my phone. Of course, naturally, I made. The, I went and got a new phone, y'all. And uh, I still haven't gotten the glitches out. So, you know, when you get my age, y'all, I'm no spring chicken by any means. Not at all, but I'm self-taught, and as you can see, Restream did not work for me, so I'm going to call one of my friends, and maybe tomorrow, I can't do it, I can't cook in my workshop, so let me show you what I'm doing, and I wanted to let you know, I learned this from Lori, who is hard-working mom, she is my mentor, and what she does when she ruffles, she makes sure her ruffles 
you take these up and you match them so that they stand up more. So do you see what I'm talking about? And it helps the mesh stand up a lot better. So I'll tell you what, I have a friend whose husband bowls quite a bit. And it's, it's unusual because down south here, I mean, we have bowling leagues and stuff like that. And, um, I, you know, and, but it's not as prevalent as it is up north. And many, many people up north bowl. I mean, they have bowling alleys everywhere. And the reason for this is during the winter, there's not much to do with all the snow and stuff like that. And so, um, basically they, um, do a lot of bowling. So I can have, if you, any of y'all are from that area, what I can do y'all is I can, um, I can have Rachel make uh, a bowling wreath with your league's colors and uh, a bowling wreath sign with your league and I can make the wreath for you and in your bowling league colors and maybe I on the bottom of the wreath I can put your league have Rachel make me one and I can customize it with your league's name okay she is very talented Rachel's crafty corner and uh I tell you, y'all, in Laurie's group, we have some very, very talented people. And she, we have a wreath therapy design group. And we also have um, Laurie's success path. And uh, if you join both, you get a discount. Um and she really does an excellent, excellent job teaching us. I mean, she teaches us Etsy, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, and what I love most of all, right before tax season, because Lori is a CPA. And we get information how to file our taxes. And when I tell you, she is awesome, y'all. And I'll tell you, she has some, some of our, um, and then in the wreath therapy design group, uh, we have, she has instructors that uh, in her private group, along with herself, teaches us different methods. And uh, also, uh, let's see, uh, Susan uh, with AC Reasoning, things uh, is an instructor and uh, oh y'all we just uh, someone just joined the uh, the instructors and that is um, CT and he is with star starship designs he is very good and then there's Rachel who does uh, painting and then we have Lisa Martinez, who d who uh, d helps with sublimation, and Rachel also teaches. Um, oh, y'all broke a nail. Rachel teaches as well. Both Lisa and Rachel do cricket and silhouette and sublimation. So, y'all, when I tell you, we have. Well, I'm going to put this one here. Uh, we have some talented people, and they make fantastic wreaths, when I tell you. And arrangements, garlands, swags, you name it, they do it. And uh, Laurie has uh, added to her, um, let me get these, they fell. Laurie has added um, door hangers, and she makes them. And, uh, and you can paint with them, and uh, they're excellent. Uh, Tori 
if you go on her YouTube channel, and I as well have a YouTube channel, and it's Creative Designs by JL, and uh, you can uh, see, go up in Lori's, and you can see some of the door hanger uh, things that they've done, and they are really cute. Now, Lori's shop is Hardworking Mom, okay? And so, and you can go on her YouTube channel and check that out. But if you are really interested in wreathing, I would highly suggest you join Lori's group, okay? That's Lori at Hardworking Mom. And then... We also have some of her monitors that monitor her YouTube and also um, help her with her business. And Casey Lemon Jello, which I love to death, she uh, works with Lori and uh, she also uh, has a business. Uh, if you have a wreathing business and if you're interested in getting help, uh, with uh, Etsy or Pinterest, YouTube, uh, you can contact her and she has a fee that she will charge per hour and you can get, um, Casey, if you're on here, I'm sorry, honey, but um, I want to know, uh, you can go ahead and text uh, your uh, business if you want in here. So, but if I bring my tomorrow, what I can do, if y'all would like, I am making homemade meat the balls and spaghetti. So that's what we're ha I'm making tomorrow. And I usually make a pretty big pot. And y'all, I think I love my meatballs and spaghetti. I It's terrible, but I love it. And... Y'all, the red gravy. Now, I do brown the meatballs, y'all. Uh, uh, not the meatballs, but I mean, I do brown them in the oven. But I do do some meat within the gravy. And the reason I do that, y'all, is because you want, the, you want some of that flavor from meat to go in there. Now, I do not cook my gravy all day long. I do not do it. I do not cut, cook my red gravy. What I do do with my meatballs, I put some bread crumbs in it. I put egg. I put Parmesan cheese, fresh garlic. Um, and what I get is I get the, I think it's Johnson or something like that, the sweet Italian sausage. Sometimes you can find the ground up sweet Italian sausage. It's not really all the time. You can't always find it. And I do put that in with the ground meat. And then instead of adding, I know a lot of people put milk for it with, to make the meatballs. I do not. What I use is I cook some of, I brown some of the ground meat and sweet the, and I open a couple of links of the Italian sausage, and I brown the brown it with onions, fresh garlic, and bell pepper, and uh, some Italian seasonings. And I make my red gravy. And instead of using milk in the meatballs, what I use is some of the red gravy. And then I bake them at 350 degrees, and I also bake the sweet Italian sausage. And then when they're finished, you can do it one or two ways. I do put meatballs, I don't like the end of this. I do put uh, meatballs in my sauce, but I also make a bunch of meatballs. And I sometimes I just do, I have, I make a big pot y'all. So I'll just put some sauce in there. And, uh, this is so tight, it's not rolling. Uh, I do put some sauce in there, uh, and just with the sauce in the freezer. 
so that I can utilize this sauce. Let's say I'm making a meatloaf, okay? And, you know, not everybody, uh, I like the red gravy with my meatloaf, with my meatloaf. Um, it's just, I don't put much on it, but I do put a little in the um, meatloaf, and it really makes it tasty. So, these are just a few little things. And then, now, um, I can't, uh, normally when I make a huge, huge amount. Now, I'm talking about, y'all, y'all are going to die. It's about 8 pounds of ground meat. 8 to 10 pounds of ground meat. Uh, I use, um, I use uh, about two packs, two to three packs of the sweet Italian sausage. And not only do I make the meatballs and spaghetti, but guess what? I go ahead and I make lasagna. And my husband and I, you know, it's just the two of us. Now, I'll make the square brownie pan, and I'll fill a couple of those up with lasagna. And uh, I, But my normally, which is perfect for my husband and I, you know the mini loaf pans that you can buy? Uh, for cakes or, you know, little banana breads. Um, I'll do the lasagna in there, and I'll freeze them. And now I don't, uh, I don't bake them. I do not bake the uh, lasagna. I put it in so that when I take it out the freezer, I can bake it in the oven. And uh, it's like fresh lasagna, y'all. And I, and believe it or not, I'm not a fan of ricotta cheese, ricotta, ricotta, whatever you want to say. I'm not a big fan of it. So I use Parmesan cheese, uh, the five cheese, Italian cheese. I use fresh mozzarella in my lasagna, and I don't use the ricotta. I just don't care for it. So... Y'all, you can tell that I love to cook. Basically, years ago, y'all, um, I had a little catering business. And one of my biggest sellers was my uh, pesto chicken. And it is delicious. Now, I've learned a shortcut to my pesto chicken. It is so easy, y'all. What you can do is you go go to, I don't know, we go to several places, uh, Chick-fil-A, you know, and we get chicken strips. It's right down by us. There's a place that makes chicken strips, and it's just a local little place in our town. And I'll buy, like, um, for my husband and I, you get it for like three chicken strips, you know, they're big chicken strips. And uh, what what I do is I go ahead and I put bell pepper and onion and fresh garlic and um, I do my pasta. Now, my favorite pasta, y'all, is vermicelli. It's not as thin as angel hair and it's not as thick as um, regular spaghetti. It's in between. And I use the, uh, that's all we eat is vermicelli. Because I, of all, that's what I grew up on and I'm stuck on it and I love it. But you can use any type. And the Italian seasoning. And I order from this company a case at a time. And it's the, it's the pesto that comes in a jar. And um, I use that pesto. And uh, what I do is I cut bite size, nice, a little bit bigger than a bite size, uh, a bite size bite of the chicken breast. And uh, I, uh, I, what I do is I put some olive oil and a big, I, I guess it's not a frying pan. It's it's a 
like a big frying pan about that. The I guess it's about, look, about that high, the sides. And I cook my spaghetti, my vermicelli. First, I saute my onions, my bell pepper, my Italian season, and then I throw in the fresh garlic just for a second, y'all. Garlic, you just want to slightly heat it up because you definitely don't want burned garlic, okay? And uh, you go ahead and uh, you throw your pasta in there with the onions and the bell pepper. Oh, gosh, I can't think. Oh, Bella Cuccini. That's it, Bella Caccini, and that's where I get the pesto from. It's The company is called Bella Caccini. You can look it up on the um, internet, okay? All righty. Now, we've got, I have cut extra. I went ahead and I cut it. Once again, the mesh is cut at 30 inches, and if you want to... I think we have nine of each because this has 18. It has 18 all together. Now, what I'm going to do on the red, uh, I'm going to put the black and the red and black polka dot on the red uh, on the red because I don't want it to go on the black mesh. You want to be able to see it, okay? All righty, so we're going to put it on the red and white stripe, and what you do is once you get it uh, cut, your ribbon tail's cut, you're going to make a little birdie with it, just like this, okay? Just like that. And uh, you put it on and you tie your ribbon tails in. And I usually tie them in, I do about three times to make sure they're in well. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm, I am going to make sure, let me see. All right, one, two, three. All right. Okay, let me show you how I'm putting the ribbon tails, okay? And you want to kind of take your fingers, let me show you. You're going to take your fingers underneath, and you're just going to kind of make them stand out like so. All right? And it kind of lifts the tails up. Just like so. Okay, there you go. All righty. Now we're going to go on the black with the red and white border mesh. We are going to put the red and white stripe with, the, uh, with that black mesh. Fold your ribbon tails in half. And what you're going to do, just like you do uh, with the mesh, you're going to go ahead and scrunch it up in the center. Make a bird. See? Bird wings. All right. And you're going to put it in. All righty. Oh, guess where? what I did today. We went to the movie theater. Y'all, we went to see Top Gun. Y'all, that is one of the best movies I have ever seen. It was awesome. I, the whole family thought it was one of the best movies we had ever seen. I mean, when I tell you this movie was awesome, it was awesome. Now, I did go and see Downton Abbey. Y'all, I, I didn't care for it. I thought it was a big letdown. I just, you know, it was, to me, it was a big letdown. I was very disappointed. I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's, it was all right. There was nothing spectacular about it, you know? 
I was a little disappointed. And I love that show, Doubt Nabby. It was a fantastic movie. Okay, move you over. It's just a little bit. Well, not a movie, but on TV. It was awesome, y'all. Oh, and guess what I am hooked on? I am hooked on Longmere. Oh, you talk about a good show. That is, now, I watched the first two seasons like a mad woman. And so, it is really good. I love it. So I like different types of movies, uh, TV shows. I love like NCIS and I love uh, Blue Bloods and uh, just as I said, Long Mirror. So, I, uh, you know, there's a lot of shows at NCIS. I love all the Chicago ones, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, uh, PD. So I do watch all, all of those. I, I usually tape them. I, I really like taping them. And I'm not stuck watching them, you know, with the commercials. I tell you, the commercials have gotten so ridiculous. You know, the content of the TV shows is getting less and less, you know, and what ticks me off more than anything are the drug, you know, the drug advertisements. Let me tell you something. The doctor's going to order what he thinks you need, okay? What are you going to do? Go and demand that they give you uh, this medicine? I mean, it's ridiculous. But they have gotten out of hand with that. Oh, y'all. And I tell you what. The Medicare. <laughs> the Medicare ads right before it's time to, uh, when it's time to uh, decide if you want to change or not. That drives me insane. Like, oh, that commercial. Call now. I can't stand that commercial, y'all. I can't stand it. I guess I'm nuts. Who knows? Oh, well, that's me. We did go on a little vacation. Uh, we went to Hot Springs, Arkansas. And, uh, it was really nice, but we were lucked out because when we went, it, we, they had that cool front that came in. Y'all, it was so nice. Um, so we had a couple of days where right before Memorial Day, we went before Memorial Day and we stayed uh, through Memorial Day and we left home. But I tell you, when uh, Friday hit, well, we got, we left Wednesday, so Thursday and Friday was a great day. When Saturday hit, everything went, there were so many people, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was real, it wasn't ridiculous, but it was crowded. But I will tell you, we went to a fabulous steakhouse. It's called Porter House. The porterhouse, y'all, it was so good. It was very good. Oh, and they had this place that just has hot dogs, y'all. I mean, well, you could have gotten a hamburger, I think. That's all they serve. Well, I tell you what, it was delicious, the hot dog. Of course, I only ate half of a hot dog. It's about all I eat. But I did eat, believe it or not, I ate a small piece of my husband's steak. I ate some of his baked potato. 
I did get a bowl of soup, not a bowl, a cup of soup, which was homemade vegetable soup, and it was delicious. And then their vegetables, you know, usually when they say it's a that mix, you expect it to be frozen and out of a bag, and it's got the cauliflower and the broccoli, you know, no. They made this vegetable, and it had green beans, red pepper, onions, and carrots. Y'all, it was so good. I ate my husband's. I ate more vegetables than I ate anything else. It was delicious. Then we stopped, and, you know, because we were in the, mo in the motor home, the camper, and then we stopped, and we got, um, they went in, uh, you know, just something for breakfast, a little something we got. Y'all, guess what they had? They had these cinnamon rolls. When I tell you, they were just as good if, just as good as Cinnabon at Kroger's. Well, the last, we ate them. We ate them all. And, um, because I think they came four huge ones in a bowl. Uh, I, I mean, in a box. So we, uh, the last day we were there, we had them, um, we went and got uh, a whole thing so I could have them here at home. And they were delicious. And I usually eat a half of, I eat a half for breakfast, so... So, y'all, that's my, uh, I normally don't eat lunch. I don't eat lunch. I, um, and then I eat a small amount of dinner. What I do have, which I love, you know the Corel wear? I've got the old, well, it's not old. It's the white Corel wear. Well, if you go on the Corel site, they have, you can get the white, and they have the divided, the plates. And I've got the regular dinner plate, and I got the luncheon dinner plate. And I tell you what, I love it. I mean, a lot. It's and they're great. So if you ever want to get divided plates, Corel does uh, sell them online, and they're great, y'all. So and I use usually I use the divided luncheon plate is the one I use. And that's small portions. That's what I do. And if you want, I mean, that's what you, if you're on a diet, that is the perfect portion for your meal if you want to lose weight. Of course, my husband says I, he needs to put them on the bigger ones. I said, Danny, you're going to be throwing food away. Don't put it on the big one. You know? I said, because I'm not going to eat it all. It's going to go to waste. Like last night, for instance, y'all, uh, Costco sells these spring rolls. Y'all, when I tell you, they're to die for. And for dinner last night, y'all, this is what I had for dinner. Y'all are going to think I'm nuts. But I had... Um, Two spring rolls for dinner. And they're only about this big. That's all. And they're the vegetable spring rolls. I'm from the South, y'all. And guess who does not eat seafood? Me. I had a bad reaction to it when I was a child. I got violently ill. Nobody else did. So we knew it wasn't the... Um, it wasn't the uh, seafood because nobody else got sick and I did not have the flu. And then I, they said, oh, you must have had the flu. Well, a couple of months later, um, what happened is I, um, we had another, we had shrimp and crabs and stuff like that. And, I mean, I'm not, I don't like the texture 
of seafood, y'all. And sure enough, the same thing happened. And uh, so the doctor said, nope, you can't, you are have uh, an allergy to seafood. Mainly, I think it's shellfish. Now, I, I don't have a problem. I'll eat one, not a raw oyster, they're, uh, they're the charbroiled oyster. And I'll eat one of those. And um, that's no problem. I'll eat one of the charbroiled. And that's no problem. Um, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. Now, fish, I have never, ever liked fish. I know that's terrible but I just don't care for fish. I don't like the texture of it. I don't like the smell of it. And truthfully, I know catfish. Catfish really itself does not have a flavor. You know, does not really have a flavor. It's how you cook the catfish. Like it's breaded, so the breaded catfish is, it's the breading you more or less taste. But once again, I have this thing about the texture. I don't know why. Now, y'all, I do have a sweet tooth. Oh, my Lord. Oh, uh, if anybody goes to Wally World and y'all are checking the candy out, okay, I am looking for a certain uh, gumdrop. And that gumdrop is called the Spicy Gumdrops. So, y'all, if you see the Spicy Gumdrop, let me know. And I'll have, they're like $2.99, $3.99, y'all. Well, I want, want, I want y'all to get it for me, okay? Because my Walmart doesn't have it. You cannot order it online. So I need my spicy gumdrops, and I want at least six of those little, and they're coming up, they're not regular gumdrops, they're called spicy gumdrops. And I, I'll pay you, I'll pay you, and I'll pay the shipping. So if you go to your wall, Wally World and you see those spicy gumdrops, y'all, I want them. I'll buy, buy up to 10 if, if they have them. I'll pay you for them. I love them. I love them. So that's my one of my favorite candies. I did get hooked on uh, and then Silver Bells, but I've kind of gotten away from chocolate. I don't know why. I eat some chocolate. I only like the Silver Bells, really. And so, oh, I, every once in a while, I'll eat Heath Bar. I love Heath Bars. Okay. I must have, I did. I skipped one. I knew it. See, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. We'll fix that real quick. So, my neck is good. I was doing fine, really, up until, I guess, Wednesday or Thursday. And y'all, last year, I had what is called trans- Geminal neuralgia. It was so bad, y'all. I mean, they had me, when I tell you, for a couple of days, I would sit and I would rock and was crying. The pain was so bad until I got to the doctor. And because it was like on a Friday night, this started, and I had no idea what was wrong. And uh, they took me in the doctor's office. Uh, my neurologist got me into uh, one of a pain doctor, you know, and it was my trigeminal nerve. And uh, they call it the suicide. Isn't that nice? The suicide. Well, this mine started after I had my, what started it was my optic nerve. And the optic nerve, I guess, started the trigeminal off. And uh, it was, so 
that was fine. Now, there's different types and different places it uh, affects. Well, it affected, basically, it affected um, my, um, this time I have it, and it started like uh, Wednesday. Now, I have some pain medication. I go to the doctor Monday, and uh, they are going to, they, right here, right, if you follow the lobe of your ear and move about a thumb forward, I will get an injection there. And y'all, what they do is they freeze it and inject, I don't know what she injects, but y'all, I am so ready for it. I mean, I'm on, I, I know this sounds terrible, but, and I don't like taking the medicine. It's oxycodone. Uh, it's just, it's unbearable. It's, it's so bad. It is so bad, y'all. Red. Okay. Here. So, I don't know. So, I've got a pain pill in me right now. I'm doing good. Uh, I get the neck fixed. And then I start with this bull. But the shot will help. And what it is, is it's the jar. It's like all the bottom jar, y'all. It's just like... Somebody punched me in both sides of my bottom jar. And, uh, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, uh, the first time I got wet, got, let me tell you, it takes a lot to make me cry. If I cry, let me tell you, my feelings are very hurt or I'm in a lot of pain because my pain, I have a high pain tolerance. Okay, I will also, y'all, for the, anybody that's in my local area that may be watching, I will be doing, uh, I'm going Monday and see about setting up a room and seeing how much, if you know, uh, at this place in my area in Mandeville. And I want to do um, some wreath, teach people how to make wreaths, okay? <laughs> And it's called a wreathing class. Now, what's nice is that y'all can go, and uh, whoever wants to go, I'll give you um, three types of things you can choose from, okay, to make your wreath, all right? I'll, so, you, I'll give three different wreaths. I'll give you the opportunity to make one for summer. I'll give you the opportunity to make one for fall or one for Christmas, okay? So there'll be three different wreaths you can make. Well, only one wreath, but you have to choose which one you want. So um, I will be posting that on my page and on my personal page. And uh, all you have to do, if you have a friend, it works great, y'all. If, if you are giving, uh, getting married, and you want something for your bridesmaids, maybe uh, to do, all of y'all to get together, uh, you can do that. And uh, we'll have a wreathing party. And you will be able to order alcohol drinks, okay, if you want. So, uh, and food. The place that we're going to, uh, I've got to make sure I can go there before I even say the name. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this through the mesh. You want to go through the mesh, y'all, just like so. And you want to make sure you tuck in and make sure, y'all, that you go around the wire frame of the wreath. Usually, let's see what I have it on right now. I will flip it up so you can see. I have it on the inside, one on one side and one on the other. I've got it here. Okay. Now we're going to do the other. You don't want to do it too, too tight. And when I say too tight, the reason for that is you don't... Let me find my lid. 
there. I don't know where my red tail is. Let me see. You don't want to do it too tight to where it sinks down, okay, into the wreath. I may have to loosen that one a little bit. Now, I did twist these and I cut them off, just like so. Let me get my bigger ones. All right. So, and what I'll do is when I find out Monday what the, um, when, now, the only thing is they're busy on Friday and Saturdays, but we can do it Sundays, I think, during the day. Uh or we can do it during the week, whichever y'all prefer. And um, if you're interested in getting a group up of your friends, uh, I'll give you my phone number. It's on my page. Or you can contact me uh, through iMessage if you're interested in doing a small group. Uh, a nice, not too many now because we need, It's you got to have room to do your wreaths and I will supply the the wreath kit and uh, if you want to buy a bow maker I will you will learn how to make a bow with the bow maker and you can purchase the bow maker if you want to bring it home okay and I'll teach y'all how to make a bow And it's very easy with the Easy Bow Maker. Okay, just like that. There you go. Now, I went ahead and I did make the uh, bow ahead of time. All righty. Here you go. I got it. Okay. I can turn this on real quick. And you know, um, if you have a a, girl, a teenager that might be interested, we can work with that and. The, if they want, this would be an awesome gifts for your mom. And they could set it up, do a birthday party. And uh, for an adult or uh, the, you know, I would suggest that definitely the kids should be old enough to, you know, not too young. I think they need to be, I don't know, maybe 10, 12, no younger you know, so they can learn. And we'll set it up. It'll be fun. Or if you just have uh, like three or four people and you want to do it at your home, uh, I would suggest that you have Two, if you're going to have four people, you could do the um, foldable tables. You can fit two people there. Or you can use, um, if you can find, if you know people that have card tables that you can borrow, then everybody can use a card table and they'll have their own room. And we can do it at your home. So it'll be fun. Now you would have the option we can do swags or we can do wreaths. So if you're interested, go ahead and contact me through Facebook, Creative Designs by JL. And uh, that's what we'll do. 
All right. I should have cut these as I was going. I apologize. Okie dokie. There you go. Get it done, as they say. Get it done. Let me get the bow on and then we'll determine. Now I went ahead and pre-made the bow right here. And I just added a little strip of the blue to it. Okay. This. Okay. I don't know if I want to use the black balls or red balls. We're going to see. Through the mesh. You know, just when you get one, the other one slips out. I find it. There it is. It slipped out. And what I did is I added the uh, blue in here to pick up the blue that in the sign. I got it. Now I got to make sure that it's on both sides of the wire. And it is. Okay, let's go ahead and tie it down. Alrighty. Now, now I don't dovetail. I usually do not dovetail my ribbons until after I get them on the wreath. Because this way, I can decide how long I want my tails, and it just makes it easier. I like to be able to uh, dovetail them as I go. So, now if y'all want a really good pair of scissors, these are from Deco Exchange. Y'all, they're razor sharp. They are so good. Let me show you what they look like right here. They are so good. Oh, well, we got it. Okie doke. Catch this dovetail. Okay, I think I have them all. Nope, missed one. Okay, now with the one and a half, what I like to do with this I like to kind of curl it kind of tight. You got to roll it and I take the inside and I pull it. Okay. Same here with the red with the polka dots. We're going to roll it. Take it from the, the end in the inside. I can find where I started. Yeah, here it is. And pull it just like so. And just it just curls that ribbon. Uh, 
Okey doke. Just like so. Alrighty, there you go. And we got the blue. And it just gives it a little bit more dimension. Now, there you go. We've got the bow the way we want it. Want to make sure you see the blue. Come down with that. All right, now. I like big bows. All right, now we're going to make a decision. All right, I have these. I just don't know if I want the blue in it or not. No. Let's see, I do have this blue. You know, I think these look pretty good. What do you think? We'll alternate it with the uh, with the blue. Now we got to determine: are we going to go with the blue or the red? Let's see. it needs color. I like the blue. I really do. Yeah, let's go with blue and red, okay? It'll make it pop. It'll make it look a little bit better. I think the black is just too dark for it. sure how many I have in here. I'm losing all the little ones that are falling. Okay, now all I'm going to do here, put this here, I'll knock it over and I'll be picking up forever. I'm going to take a small, this is the needle nose I use. It's really small. I think it's like a, it's like a six inch and I'm going to take and I'm going to pull that off and throw it away, okay? Then I'm going to take my hot glue gun. I'm going to put some glue gun on it, some glue gun, some glue on it. And I am going to poke it right here on the twist tie because it's going to stick well on that twist tie, okay? So I'm going to do the same with the red. I don't know why this isn't working the way I want it to. Well, come on, glue gun. My husband fixed this glue gun. What happened? The spring, and it's just not working well. I think it's shot. Oh, let me turn this one on. All right, y'all. What we'll do, you got the gist of it. This glue gun is not working. So what I'll do, y'all, is I'll finish this off with the red and blue. Let me just kind of show you, or like so. See? You know, I just don't know. I think I'm just going to go with the blue. I know, For some reason, I like the blue in here. It just makes the sign pop. What do y'all think? I don't think we need the red. Look, what do y'all think? Of course, I can't see what y'all are saying, but I think I'm just going to go with the blue. Let me raise it up. You see the blue? And it brings out the blue in the sign. And in the, um, I like the blue. 
I'm going to go with just the blue on here, okay? So let me raise you up. I've had you on here long enough. Here you go. There you go. Never know which direction to go. Okay. I wonder if this bow needs to... Yeah, my bow needs to come up. I'm going to move my bow up. Okay? That bow needs to come up to about right here. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great night. You might see me on my page cooking tomorrow. I'll make that decision. And as always, may God bless and thank you for joining me. I very much appreciate y'all um, signing on with me. Thank you and God bless. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.